<laughs> the next one, and maybe the biggest of the week, Sting announces a retirement date. Yeah. So he goes on AEW Dynamite, and he says he's travelled up and down the road with the guys, the influences in his professional career, and why he and other older wrestlers keep coming back to wrestling. Uh, 2015, he claims, was his original retirement, although I think we've more or less established that he really first tried to retire in 2001, 2002, 2003, then he goes to TNA. And then the big joke is he retired every single time his contract was coming up, and then Dixie Carter paid him another (laughs) half a million a year contract, and then he came out of retirement to come on. But uh, Sting's entire career uh, and his retirement and announcement, and he will be either 64 or 65 when he eventually sort of hangs up the face paint, as it were. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, big news, right? I, you, you we're talking about one of the major icons of my generation's uh, 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 sp- you know, time in the sport. Um, uh, Steve, I, I, I got to know Steve very well. He's the first person when I went on the road to uh, UWF. I had you know, driven several days to Dallas. I you know, didn't drive straight, took my time, you know, moseying on down there, and got to the office, parked in the underground parking, went to the elevator, and Steve and his wife, Sue, at the time, were there. And, of course, I know who he was because I watched the UWF, and I told him where I was going. I said, yeah, follow me. I'll show you where it is. And uh, ended up renting a room in their house uh, at the time when I was in, in UWF. Uh, so I got to know Steve really well, good guy, uh, really um, – Loved the business. You know, he he and uh, uh, Warrior, Ultimate Warrior, came in at the same time as, I think, the Blade Runners. And uh, both have been bodybuilders, in, in, you know, in California and uh, uh, came in. Uh, I would say that Steve was probably the more diligent as far as, like, l- working to learn the craft. And, uh, you know, there's – when you hear people say that, like, uh, I'm sure Dutch probably talks about that at times and uh, other people that you speak with. Uh, there's no one craft to learn. There's so many different things. Uh, if you look at, say, Mick Foley, Sting, the franchise, and Ricky Steamboat, you see four very different types of characters. They're all successful to different degrees. Uh, Sting was able to take, uh, you know, the base that he had and in, in coming into the business and, you know, come up with a character that really sunk into the imagination of the wrestling fans. That ain't easy to do. Sometimes it's luck. Sometimes serendipity. Uh, sometimes it's, it's by design. Uh, you know, but when you look at that, the one thing I like for me, I don't say uh, is like, boy, that guy just got lucky. Right? Cause there's no such thing in this business. You don't luck will take you like maybe through the front door. Uh, but to run the roads, like, like we all used to in UWF. And that was a real territory run. Uh, you, you know, you, you have to have some kind of a love for the business uh, because otherwise you couldn't stick it out that long. Uh, but Steve was, was, was lucky in the sense, like I was lucky to, to get their break into the business in a company like Bill Watts's UWF, because we've talked about it before that dressing room was just chock full of incredible wrestling talent. Uh, just sit down kid under the learning tree and soak it in. And so he took that and did very different thing with it than I would have done with it. Right. Because again, we each have our own individual skill sets. Mine's vastly different than his, but I will credit Steve with this. Also, uh, I had gone down there. Uh, I'm sure if you go back and look at those early UWF tapes when I was there, I'm sort of a skinny ish, softish looking kid uh, because of Steve's background. You know, when I would go into the gym as a kid like that, I'd okay, do a set of these and then go over and do a set of that. And Hey, that looks fun. Let's go do that. Steve was the first to tell me like, no, you do a body part like this and, you know, what the keep the cable straight, like just these little tiny details from a bodybuilder's point of view that I, I credit him and some others like steamboat and, and, uh, uh, snooker with later teaching me more about that. But the initial portion of me understanding what to do in a, in, in a weight room was from sting. Uh, so if this is his, you know, final retirement is, is, his real like lifelong retirement, uh, man, you know, what a legacy he's left on the business. Uh, and I, I know Steve, I, I, uh, enough to know that he's probably being some semblance of, of guidance, at least to the guys he's working with. Uh, when we were in TNA, uh, I had always thought like these, all these great veterans that we had in the dressing room would sit down and. James comes and says, Hey, can watch my match and you, know, you divvy out the uh the same way it was given to us. Um and instead I think Steve was more didn't want to look like, hey kid, I'm the know it all, let me teach you. 
Uh, but if you put him with somebody, he would teach that person. Like, like you know, I'm sure he's doing right now with Darby Allen. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, if again, if this is the the final one, and something tells me because like, and it's not a slam towards Steve. This business, when you've been successful to the heights that Steve has, and and like, let's face it, he's been to the pinnacle of it. Uh, it's a very powerful opiate. And just like alcoholics fall off the wagon, uh, you know, I think Steve will in some way always be around the business, but at 64, 65 years old, you know, this, all those years, decades in the ring, take its wear and tear, but at 64, 65, no matter how well you keep yourself in shape, your body can't do what it used to do. You know, it's, uh, you hear the phrase, it's hell to get old, uh, better than the alternative dying young, but you know, Steve's reaching that point where. You know, I think he could risk serious injury. I think like, wasn't there something recently like where he like fell on his face or something? And yeah, he, he know, jumped like, off a ladder. He jumped off a ladder, and I don't either. The people weren't supporting the ladder in the right way, or something like that. He didn't get the distance. He jumped out. Uh, the ladder was in the ring. He jumped off, and then slammed his chin right into a fella's knee. And yeah, then he ends up, yeah. So you know where that little soul patch goatee sort of thing that was just like bright red. Yeah, so, yeah, he really yeah. busts himself. Ouch! Up. Yeah, sure. You know, and that, and that age, you know, again, like for you kiddies out there, you don't bounce back quite as easily as you used to. So, uh, you know, he certainly made enough money, and I don't think that's why Steve does it anymore. I'm sure you know, you know the, the contracts are certainly important, right? You don't want to go out there and do it for free, but uh, uh, you know, the fact that that he's still able to do it and still do it at a fairly decent level, right? Like, yeah. I, you know, it's like what, looking back at Terry Funk and ECW, you go like, my God. Yeah, that he was performing at that level in a company like that at that time is really amazing. And the same thing for Steve, but for all the guys, younger kids out there in the business, and I don't say kids like condescending them because we're older than you guys, uh, pay attention, watch what he's doing. See, you know, the charisma that Steve has and how he oozes that out to the audience and, and makes that personal. Everybody in that audience, when you see someone like Steve, uh, sting, uh, everybody in that audience thinks when he looks into the audience, he's looking at me. Uh, that's that's called charisma. You know, he's making that personal contact to that uh, to that to that audience. So, uh, what a career! If this is the end of his career, uh, kudos. He's left a big mark on it. That ain't easy to do, and especially in this sport. And uh, I, I wish him if, again. If if this is his retirement, the best retirement that he's uh, uh, deserving of. So, good to hear.